Uh, I want to do a crafting video about felting because people have asked me about my felting projects. I secretly felt. And I know I don't really post it. You don't see crafting with Bane videos. But I do craft a lot. And so here's like a little Mothman that I felted. And you can see that he's all like he's all felt and I was going to show you the techniques I use to make little characters like this and the process of it I did a video one time that didn't work out but this kind of shows the midway how we felt and so I'm going to show you the techniques of how to do the basically the hand felting of this and so you get at the end of it you get an even seam that's almost invisible, unrecognizable, and a fun character you can give to your friends, family, or sell on Etsy, whatever you like. What I started out with is like a polyfill, something like this. I get this at Michael's. Uh, it's the brand here is Loops and Threads. It's, uh, you can find it at Michael's Eddie Craft Store, but you get this fluff, right? And then we're going to turn this into this. So you can see the difference between, now we go from this stage to this stage. What I do uh, use is felting needles. These are clover needles that you can get at any craft store. Uh, they have a special facet on them. They're like barbed. So that allows you to felt more thoroughly. Because you're forcing fibers in on each other. I'm going to use a clover needle and a clover felting base. Um, usually this is really good for felting, um, but it is a bit one-sided, so when you get to 3D projects, if you, you are felting something three-dimensionally, and you, in the back you don't want to bleed through, this thing, if you're felting on this the entire time, it will bleed through like this. So you'll see the, the fiber actually coming through. Because while you're felting it on this end, you're forcing it through on this end. So I'm going to show you different techniques that I use so that you don't have that problem and that you also can have it so um, it's not all expensive roving. This roving here is like 100% wool type roving that you can get at the store like this. Wool roving. A lot of this is for detail work on the outside of purses and things. But I take this stuff and I use it as hair um, for characters or, you know, um, blue skin tone or whatever. But this stuff is expensive. This stuff here will cost you like 16, 20 bucks. If you get it in large amounts, it can be 40 bucks. This one here I think was like, this is like $6 or something. But for the exact same price as $6, I got this entire bag. So... What we're going to do is use both medias and make something that's not as cost absorbent, but also is something that still has high quality to it. So what I do is I get the, I get a handful of the fluff and I just start to stab it, right? And I start pulling it in. And I'm wary of my fingers, right? Like, I always know where my fingers are 
when I'm pushing in. There's this much active space in the needle and you want to know that your fingers are safe from this space. So when you're pushing it in, you'll know that the needle isn't going to come in on your fingers. There's a lot of videos I've watched over YouTube that have similar like information, techniques, but this is something that I've created on my own, my own technique. I've never seen anyone else do it. They usually use a foundation of like this, but of 100% wool. They make the entire body out of it from start to finish. What I'm doing is tucking in these corners. The difference between an, an unfelted patch and a felted patch, you'll see is pretty here. I'll show you. You see, it's more much more refined. You can take the same amount of fluff, you felt it, and it be, you can make it into shapes. You can actually felt to a point where you're sculpting this, like you're you're sculpting clay, but you're doing it one punch at a time. It's like you're moving your thumb through the material. You're, you're forcing it into being, becoming something. Here's an example. I did a, a torso of a doll. Completely felt it out of roving. Well, I call it roving, but it's not. It's the fiber fill. It's the plush fill stuff. But then you can coat it with wool you can literally felt 100% wool right on top of it and it's like you're making it's you're sculpting wool like you would sculpt clay it is more time time con like consuming but it has its own qualities to it you can sculpt the fiber fills as if you would sculpt anything else you, when you're using this needle you get in there, and as you're do, punching it, you can gently make a hand, a body, forms. You can do anatomical studies. This is just as much a creative medium as paper clay or any of the other like sculpting mediums. For Now, you can't make a cast of this for doll making, but if you're... The whole charm of this business of making felted wool characters is that they are standalone. This is a one of a kind, and it has its own charm because of that. People like to know that there's only one in existence, that there's all the time you put into that one character, there will never be another one like it. But the techniques used to make it. I think it should be openly shared so that if you yourself put in the time, you can sculpt whatever you want. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm kind of like turning it as I as I stabbing it in here to make sure that uh, I'm getting kind of like an even distribution on it, so it's not lopsided and like see like it's open like this. But if I pinch it in. I kind of give it the shape I want, and then you can go in, make sure you know where your fingers are. Getting hooked by one of these needles is, it's not like a normal needle, because it's thinner, they break very easily. Never put it in like this and then turn it, you just snap the needle, always in and out straight, or if you're doing it sideways, straight. Never in and then turn, or turn, like that, never do that. You'll just waste money. Especially because some people buy them in bulk and they can get good deals online and they're willing to do that. I'm never the kind of person who just likes to wait for a week or two for something to show up in the mail. Um, I'd rather just, you know, comb the stores. If they're out of stock, they're out of stock. I just don't get to do the project, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I'll wait, but like, usually uh, artistically, it's at a whim. So it's like, oh, I feel like doing art today. And then 
if I can't like facilitate it, I'm just the wind is out of my sails. I just I don't have any desire for it anymore. Like, another day has to come around where I feel like being artistic on in this medium because you actually have to have a lot of energy to sit and think about the shape constantly punching at it it reminds me of like working i mean i can't really perfectly say it's adjacent to working with marble or something but like you are taking something and like you're forming it into, into something else and so like it's almost like working with those big rock materials because you're you're chiseling away at it to the point where you have something you know worth showing now if you're going to be doing like uh what i do and i'm going to show you this is a it's a skin technique the skin technique is you form a core right and from that core, you put something on top of it, and you felt that on. And while you're felting that on, you slowly, you know, encase it. And then you can felt details and things into it. Sometimes you get caught up in You can felt this, the fiber fill. You can felt it into whatever you want. It can, and then it'll take detail like, really nicely. But it's only one color, and it has a lot of these, like, uh, these weird fibrous, like, zigzags from the construction of the, the product. And uh, you want to, I, I mean, it doesn't have, like, a, a, a smooth finish for, like, like final production type stuff when you want to look like a, a real finished product. But basically, when you get like a puff that was like this big, and we condense it down with the felting to this point using the felting needle. Now, there are needles that have like three and four prongs on them, and people feel like that makes it go faster. It, I think it makes it condense faster, but it also makes it dense like in a, in a different way from what I want. Because I only want to be able to loosely form it because the real forming comes from this step okay so from here we kind of understand this is a hundred percent wool not a lot of places have it a lot of places have acrylics and i'll show you the difference between acrylics and Acrylic wool versus real wool has just different properties to it. And you'll see in um, say this say this material. This is thicker than most other ones, but most of the acrylic stuff is like uh, thinner in its construction than the wool. The wool is very dense. You can't push your finger through it really easily. It's actually thick. Like if I wanted to, I could just keep working my finger. I could shove my finger right through this material. And so this is, even though the acrylics are nice, they wear very, very quickly. You can already see where I dug my finger into it, where it's already lighter here than it is over here and here. So... I don't think the acrylics are bad though. If you can only find part acrylic, part wool, it works just the same. The techniques are the same. Um, it's actually a little easier with the acrylics because they are thinner to apply as a second skin. But the wool has a finish that you can't replicate without it being wool. Like it's specifically wool is the guy, you know. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to actually make a character out of it. So what we want to do is understand the dimensions of what we're dealing with and we want to cover it. Understanding the kind of character you want to make is uh, very important. And so 
what we're gonna do with this beige tone here is we're gonna we're gonna make like a, let's make a, another mythical character. We got we got Mothman here. He's he's warning people of danger. We're gonna get someone who do, doesn't really warn you. In fact, it tricks you into getting in danger. Let's do a mermaid. She she sings and then gets you to like run your boat across the shore and then laughs so she swims away. We're gonna we're gonna go with the the protector, the warn. And then we're going to go with the mischievous on the other side. We'll do that. So this, what we'll do with this piece, is this will be a torso. This will be a torso. So, like, oh, this looks big enough for a torso, right? So we want to cover the front. We kind of want to understand how much um, we want to use to felt in here. So when you take it, you kind of roll it in. And you start felting. Felting is like stitching. It's like you're stitching one onto the other, right? Like when you take your your clothes and you sew them up. And then you kind of see like, okay, oh, I need about that much material. Let's cut it. I eyeball everything. Now, some people are really good with patterns. I just eyeball it. And it usually works out for me. Like there's a couple times I've gotten bitten from not eyeballing it properly. But for the most part, when I eyeball it, it looks right. But if for you, if you know what size of character you want, and you want to do the torso a certain size, and you want that all worked out, go ahead and map it out. Go ahead and make sure that the dimensions of that character are accounted for, and the way that you want them to be accounted for. You can go ahead and do that extra step. For me, it's tedious, and uh, after I get the whole point, like process of uh, planning out the character. I don't even want to mess with the character anymore because I feel like I'm already done. I already planned it out. I'm done. I'm done with this guy. That must be, that's more of a psychology thing than anything else. I don't, I don't think it actually helps make a better product necessarily. Uh, I think you should more likely, or more more budgetly, I should say, plan out your projects, um, especially if you're doing for like a professional purpose, or um, if you just want something to have like a professional look to it. A lot of times, the people that get into this want something to do with their time. They want to create a little crafty guy, but they also want to do something that's not mainstream. This is not mainstream. There's no one going to be selling these in droves. You know why? Because it takes so much time. It's not cost effective. Like, I mean, on like a, the mainstream, mainstream scale. Like, if someone decided, I'm going to be selling felted dolls. Or felted characters. Any kind of felted creature. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell it across the, the world retail. There's no way. You would have like... People in the, the factories putting in hundred hours for one character, like it's just not. My technique though cuts that considerably. Obviously, you've seen from this video. I'm already almost done with the part of it here, but like, yeah, like just the the time and effort put into felting it's just it, that's why you see it at the bazaars and you see like these ladies on YouTube who are like you know creating something that is not normal not normal like stuff you can buy at the store Mattel couldn't sell this and and so like make a profit not if they wanted to pay because it's each individual character is up to an artist I mean you could boil it down to okay this pattern goes on this face and everything but this is more in the realm of do it yourself 
you'll see these people in like uh, Etsy or, or wherever making these like custom dolls because there really is a market for it. There's a, there's a large group of people in the world who see the value of them and the artistic quality of them, but they don't want to. I mean, it's kind of like an endless cycle. They, they're actually worth way more than sometimes that they're sell they're sold for. You'll see some of these dolls sold for a hundred bucks. I, gu I guarantee you, they put more than ten hours into that. If even if they're giving themselves like ten dollars an hour for making the doll, like the the skill it takes to uh, this the time it takes to acquire the skill and the knowledge to be able to make the doll in this way is worth more than ten dollars an hour I can guarantee you that so a lot of times these are like sold for a thousand dollars and if they're not sold for a thousand dollars you're probably getting ripped off if you're selling them for anything less than that you're probably not making your time back but it depends on also like if the artistic stuff is uh, you know in high demand like depends on the faces and things like that Okay, this is a technique. I'm going to show you where When you're felting a seam like this you can take the seam and you can blend it You take the, uh, the needle and you go horizontally and You just work it across And what it does is it like gently frays it into from one to the other. And you can see that that seam is slowly blending away. See that? Almost like a seam to a t-shirt or something. But if you do it enough, long enough, and from both directions, You'll just have a cleverly, it'll look like a scar from a surgery or something. It'll just look like a nice sweet patch here. That, you know, it's no, no big deal. A lot of times you do this like, if you want traditional toy style, you do it along the seam of the side of the body. Do it along the seam of the side of the body. And then, I mean, you put two pieces together. I just wrapped it in one big piece to sell it like that. But, um... If you want to do it the other way, it's not, it's not necessarily wrong by any means. And once you get the skin on, like if you feel like your body is felted in the right way, you can grab some more polyfill and you can just kind of like stuff it the way you would a stuffed bear or something. Or you can accentuate like the midsection, the hips, the different parts of the body. Right now I'm just focusing on getting this skin like at the seam on properly so that I'm going to go around and start imposing on it then like, like what I mean by imposing on it is like work on this corner here and like try to I'll maybe I'll make like an hourglass shape in here you know so If you have a big seam like that, like see the, kind of the way that fell in, you can kind of pinch it together and start bringing it in. <laughs> yeah, watch out for your thumb because like, you have to keep track of this active area. So if you bring it in like this, you might want to keep your thumb back here, you know, or understand how far in you're pushing it so you don't dig into your own skin. And while I'm pushing it in like this, I'm very gently 
I'm just laying it across here and just kind of like fiddling. Like, you know, when you like violin, the, the slowest, softest melody. And it's just like working that fiber across. Now, an argument could be said about how you're kind of also weakening it at a point. But we're going to be putting other layers on later on. Clothing and other things and we're going to be working it and we the seam just needs to look nice it doesn't need to necessarily represent the strength of this the entire skin but you can see like if you keep working with it it i mean obviously what you're doing is you, by bringing these fibers here, over here, and from over here, over here, you are weakening it, but you're also stretching it across. You're doing like a blend. And you can keep doing that. I mean, for time restrictions sake, I'm not going to keep doing it all day, but you'll see how it actually, from this here to this here, you can see that that and this is a strong hold. It's not coming apart, you know? And if you do that over all the entire body, then you're gonna be fine. Like this, this character's not gonna be falling apart for any reason, unless like she's actually treated very horribly or he or whoever it may be that you make. Hello, um, I'm sitting here in the car and I wanted to demonstrate something really that I, I do on the run or when, when I'm moving around. And it's something really simple, but, but uh, it has to do with like the felting, right? So I posted a, a video earlier about felting and the felting techniques you can see from like my hands and stuff like that. But because I'm recording it from a tablet, um, you might not see, you know, the whole, the spectrum of things, but what I wanted to show is like different like felting techniques, right? So in the other video, I'm working on a, a higher class or a higher quality art uh, doll. And I'm using the 100% wool. On this one, um, I want to use as an example of what you could use with even cheaper materials so over at michael's you can grab this i don't know if you can see it it's falling apart here <laughs> inflate for you Loops and thread, yeah. Loops and threads, classic fiber fill. Um, I like this stuff because it felt very well. So what I wanted to show you was the different kind of things you can do with felting. Like I see how so many different felting videos where they just make a standalone character. It looks like it looks about like this big, and it's just standalone, right? Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking this oh, you can see Ecofill Classic. This is 100% polyester. It's supposed to like work like wool and felt, felting wool. But this is a baby blue uh, uh, color. And it, it's, since it's 100% polyester fiber made with recyclable, recycled, you know, post-consumer materials, it is like the you know, the earth friendly and the cheap option. One of the things um, you can do with this is you can work it just like any other art medium, and you can sculpt it like these ears and things. Okay, so see with the ear here, the way it's sculpted. This is with the the ecofill, so. You can get like sculpting detail and you can get shapes of things with this material, with this fiber. 
it blends better with the wool, 100% wool. As you can see, like here, it looks like there's like a lot of the folds ends up scarring here, and then you have patchwork you can do. But when you blend it, see, when you blend it, the sun is not helping me. When you blend the fibers into each other, there is a large amount of, yeah, let's see. The way it blends isn't as clean as wool. It doesn't take to each other like the same way wool does, like here. You see along here, it's a Frankenstein stitching. Now, this is just the, the punching of the, the one piece on another piece. Like say, this piece of the ear here that's missing. I cut a piece of this out and I want to felt it on here. It will have the the Frankenstein stitching, but if you wanted to use the blend techniques like I showed you in the first video, where you actually blend the line, it won't work as well with the Ecofill. But for some projects, I don't think it really matters. You can still do Setting sun is killing me, but I, I'm trying to I'm trying to show here that you can still have something that looks pretty good regardless of the price point of the material material you're using. So I mean, you can let's see here. You can blend it in. Here, I'll show you in a second here. Okay. So, with the way I have uh, this this one being created is a lot of it's patchwork. So you like, just cut out a piece and you you lay it on the sun, I tell you. I thought doing something like on location, like something that, you know, would, a project you can do in the like when you're on the go <laughs> it's not working out right okay so there's like a hole here you can see where there's the fiber film poking through and see that white spot and so what I'm going to do is just use this piece here to cover it now no, normally you don't really necessarily need a piece of this big I just wanted a piece that was going to show up yeah sure Okay, I tried to arrange the camera better so you can see what I'm doing here. Take the pizza felt. Yeah, there we go. That filter, they have that beauty face filter is not helping anybody. Does it make me look more beautiful? Yeah, right. So, if you can see, this... I was going to try to show you the blending techniques I use for this, but uh, on location, felting, in the sun, it's, a, it's not working. But you can see, like, what I do is I gently punch around the, the circumference of the, the felted piece, right? I'm just kind of tacking it in. And then... I kind of gently work it, and uh, yeah, let's see. I gently work it around the circumference. This ends up making it look a little patchworky. Now, some people like that ragdoll look. And, and if you want to save a buck 
and like felt something like a ragdoll type character and uh, some people actually like that I've seen people buy those for pretty decent price on Etsy I even tried to put <laughs> this filter. This filter makes it so bad. It's so hard to see. Alright. So anyway. Yeah. I wanted to explain a little bit more about this uh this new character. Uh this felting here too because I want to do a video on different styles of joints and different styles of uh, material and, and what it ends up creating. Mm. Okay, as you can see here, like when you try to blend. What is actually the camera picking up this? This part here. Hold on, I'm gonna try to readjust it. Okay, surprise. So I put the square on there and I, I slowly felted it in and you can see, as you can see, um, that one square, you, you, you can't even see, but you can see where uh, other seams are, right? And this is what I'm talking about, blending in the seam. So you just gently keep poking around the edges and you blend those seams in. Yeah. Now some of the seams don't blend as good as others. And I think it really comes down to, in my opinion, is the material, like, this is the recycled material. I think wool is more pliable, so it, it's able to, to blend better. But I still think you can get, uh, like, an uh, attractive character with this material. So, like, this is why I got started. I got these... This is a glow-in-the-dark parachute, parachute cable. You can get it at any craft store or like a uh, store that sells art supplies. They'll have like parachute cables for people who like to make bracelet and stuff. What I did was a series of, um, I guess they're uh, lasso knots or this hangman knots and I did um, the series so that I knew like elbow joint wrist joint I did that and I did it and when they I would felt the core on top and then I'd felt the, the skin on top of that so I have well, this is kind of like a skeletal structure that will run through the whole thing and then this will be like an elven character eventually. Um, and we're going to do the loose joints at first. Here, like that. Just to, it'll kind of have this like puppety feel to it. But this is like a way you can do the joints and you can actually have this whole structure all the way through. And then... You get the fiber fill, and you take a section of the arm, and you just engulf it. Like, say you want the arm to be like this, and you, you kind of eyeball how much fiber fill you need. If you take too little, it's fine, because you can always build upon it. And you just start building on top of... building on top of the parachute cable and you can actually felt right into it and as you 
you're felting into it, you can slowly kind of fix like how you want how you want it to work. So. I want this to be the elbow joint, so I just want this right here to be the bicep, tricep, deltoid area. And really what it comes down to for this chunk is just making a, just adhering the fluff to the skeletal structure, and then you'll be... slowly shaping it here and I'll just skip for you can see what I'm doing I'm, I'm slowly poking in the bulging areas and it's like giving shape to cotton candy and I'm working around this so that it is like the bone of the arm and the fibers are actually being felted uh, occasionally into it so that it is structured like so. And you just keep working at it until you actually have the shape, the desired shape you want. I'll fast forward, you'll see. Okay. So you can see how once you felt it in a bunch, how it can fit around the skeleton, and then you know you have this kind of joint. Thing, type thing going on and it works the same with this you once you start adding the the fiber fill to it and felt felting onto it and then well, you, you can slowly work it down so it's not so large and then you'll get the, uh, the desired shape you know of the arm that you want it, you are sculpting so like if you get into this and you're kind of like oh it's not turning out right um, just keep sculpting, sculpting arms, sculpting legs, sculpting, um, body parts, or just understand, you know, some part aspect of anatomy. And then from here. Okay, now you can see that the arm is more tightly uh, felted that it's more compact it's not that wispy stuff anymore it's more of like a squishy plush material i can see how these these are just like you know it's loosely put together but it does create i think the skeletal structure needed for the fiber fill then what i do is i get a piece of felt Kind of assess like how much room is needed, you know. Like okay, we'll probably need about let's see. Are gonna need to be about this much, like that, and then we'll just trim off this piece here. And then we'll get the felting this part onto the roving, or onto the uh, the fiber fill. A lot of times there'll be parts that you can't perfectly line up, and then it'll be, you know, it'll have a little bit of the the kind of the patchwork filler. Where you'll take like a piece of scrap, and you'll find where the say, say like right here, you'll find where this like little part is and then you'll cover it and then you'll felt that on there like that but you probably want to trim it from here to here so you, it would perfectly fit that space but then you take like this the sun's died down a little bit more so it's it's not so overbearing you wrap it and you felt it, you felt it on there just like that. It's like felting on a, a skin. A lot of times I just go around and I start tacking in the corners. Like that. 
and then it'll hold on its own and you just keep going through like this and you just tack it on You can see that. Like that. So it looks like uh, stitching when you do it along the side here. And you just keep going. You just keep going. So the whole seam is like laid down. And you go along this. If you cover one line cover the edge with the other you can gently work this whole seam and it'll blend and end up looking like these seams here so that seam you can see here it goes into like this it goes around this is a seam these are different pieces of cloth that have overlapped and felt it in. I didn't blend this. This is just tacked on, but you can see how it's the same thing with the leg here, this Frankensteining. But overall, once you take a step back and once you felt it all, and then you can um, felt like clothing and things, you'll have like a little character that. You know, it's actually really cheap. Each sheet of this uh, eco fiber fill stuff was like 50 cents each. Um, you can get it on sale at like a Joann's or something for like 20 cents, 30 cents for each sheet. And then you can, if you just take the time, you can blend, like say on the face here, you can blend these. Can blend these seams that you can see it going right here but I just don't think it blends as well as the wool but I still think it has a cute character like quality to it and then someone will find it uh, endearing enough to actually enjoy it uh, if you give it enough time and I'll do more videos so you can see like further on down like how you know how much effort actually kind of goes into making this but it actually you know it, it becomes like a like a marionette puppet type thing but it also has that plush quality to it that you know won't hurt a kid and you can make it yourself all right, well, thanks for sticking with me for this period of time. <laughs> Unseen, right? But, uh, I hope you have a good day. <laughs> hey there, uh, in the car again, doing, uh, another video. Uh, this time I got in the shade a little bit, have a little bit better lighting. On the go felting. Part three, right? So, in my first video, I was actually starting a doll that has different joints, right? And so... I wanted to show something different because um, so the felt I was using was three dollars a sheet, a little bit more expensive. This you can get 50, 50 cents to uh, you know on sale, like I was mentioning in video two. You can get on you know uh, twenty three cents on sale. But um, what I wanted to show is the progression and some of the techniques I was using from video two. Now video two, I was showing uh, the blending techniques. 
the top here. This was open in video two, and then we covered it up. Then I was showing the, this arm, right? Wrapping the arm, felting it, um, and so. Uh, and I also talked about this uh, parachute cable that I was using as a skeletal structure. It runs actually through the entire doll here. And what I was doing was showing you that this material right here is a 50 cents a sheet, right? This, this parachute cable, you get a whole pack for $7. Right. You can make something homemade for your friends, your family, the one, your loved ones, or, you know, sell them on Etsy, whatever. And it doesn't have to be, you know, amazingly over expensive. It doesn't have to have um, just the material cost. So it needs to be super high. You know, I'm just using these uh, red clover felting needles. And you get like this. Pick them up at any craft store. And this whole thing, I mean, obviously the effort you have to put in is time. And you can tie these tighter. A lot of times I give a lot of slack on some of these just so um, I'll have time, room to work with it. If I need to put more things in or, or work around it. Um, but that's always subjective. It's always up to the, the, the creator, whoever, you know, whatever you value. But what I did in the, the video before this one was I wrapped this and I felt the, the seam here. And then I wrapped this top part here. And then I cut and then I felted it here. And you see I kind of left this section open here. You'll see a little bit of the batting here and still uh, exposed. But you see in the, 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 the core uh, batting felted it into the genetic shape that I wanted and then I'm going to wrap it in the baby blue eco felt. And you can see uh, the blending techniques on top of that here, right? These a lot of these are folded pieces overlapping each other. The ear from yesterday, all taken care of. You can see felted the uh, the exposed ear. From the, oh, it was from the last video. And then... I also added a little uh, shoulder piece here. Actually, I was doing a video earlier and I lost it because the the way that YouTube... I, I was uploading directly to YouTube and the way that YouTube worked, it, 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 didn't, it didn't save it. <laughs> I was using a, you know, a, a Wi-Fi on the go, so I was at a restaurant and it didn't work. But, as you can see here, I did this kind of like buff shoulder muscle here. Um, I added this initially to try to um, not only create something anatomically so it looks proper. So when I put the head on like that, you know, that was anatomically proper. But, since it's going to be a female character, she doesn't really need to be maxed out. But she will be like a warrior type character, so not necessarily inappropriate. And you can see with your projects, as you blend these seams and you you work out the anatomy of you know the rib cage and say you know the chest, the breast area, and then this here, this seam. Now, normally this really bothers me because how apparent and blatant the seam is, but. 
what I'm gonna do here. If I can get in a good spot here. Is I'll show you how I blend them. Like I just kind of go and work the lines towards each other. Now usually the the side that overlaps. Now you can see in the seam. This side of the felt overlaps this side of the felt. So what I'll do is I'll work the overlapping side down. So here, let me see if you can, if you can see that. Now, and because this is, like I said in the last video, this is the Eco Felt. It is a, the the polyester recycled material um, for your for that friend or that customer who loves saving the environment. I mean, you even have them in the the grab machines now. They have 100% recycled toys. All right. See the seam? It can get better. If you use the felt like the the blending technique here, yes. a lot of it is gently just working across like this, and keeping the needle straight. Don't bend the needle; you'll, you'll break it immediately. But keep that needle straight. Gently work it here, across, and. I'll, I'll do a time jump. I'll show you. All right. Ta -da. Okay. So what I did here is took a little time to blend this line more. So it's not necessarily one side overlapping the other. It's more of just like a, a smooth scar. If I can, there you go. So you can see it more like that better. It's, it's strong. It holds up. It's not going to fall apart. It's felted strong. And you can see how you can use this technique. And it's like, I mean, it's like sewing. A lot of people do the pattern work. But instead of, you're doing out the machine. You're just uh, patchworking the doll. Yeah. All right. So just like the last video where we wrapped up this arm, we're gonna be wrapping up this arm. And the technique is the same. Get the arm piece. And you kind of gauge how, how much you, uh, felt you're gonna need. And then, uh, once you kind of assess how much felt you'll need, you just wrap it up, tack it on, usually when I'm putting um, the body together, I, I, I compare the arms so they're comparable in size, like this one's like, oh, this one's pretty squishy. This one's pretty squishy, like, this one actually might need a little bit more fluff, but, I don't know, if that ever happens, like, if you're, you're building it, and you feel like, oh, this one's not as, you know, substantial, The great, the great way about using this fluff is like, it's really cheap. Because it's really cheap, like, you can use it to, if you fill it like the, the, the bulk, yeah, you just get, you start working it in.
you can see that, but I just tacked on an extra amount of fluff to give it a little extra thickness to it. This stuff will all compact down, you know, as you're felting it in. And there's multiple ways of doing this. I, this was just one way I wanted to show the the arms and the legs, how you can like, connect them all together. And you can make, between these spaces here, you can make this much tighter. It doesn't have to be as loose as I've made it here. Because she has up actually kind of just ragdolling, right? Like the character just is just like... And you might not want that specifically for yours. You can make it much tighter. There's different knot styles you can do that will just make each joint, like, you know, just really, I mean, play with it. You know, look into it, and as you, you're creating, you know, see what works best for your specific project. For this one, I'm doing this ragdoll technique, ragdoll style, but for other ones, I keep uh, a series of doll joints uh, from uh, Derice uh, and use these. I'll show you how to do it with the wool. I think it works better with the wool, period. But either way, because well, what you want to do is you want to be able to hold it tight. Like you want the materials to be able to hold tight. And when you punch a hole in it, you want to 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 degrade. And wool is very strong with that. A lot of the synthetic fibers are very easily like they, they just fall they start to fall apart. So Okay, one one thing I wanna show you guys is oftentimes you run into this where you're felting on top of something and you'll get these folds, right? And if you just felted them in, you'd have these big old folds like that and like that. Now, what I do is get the little scissors, make a quick snip, All right? Like this, make a quick snip, All right? And then this will allow you to just fold it in on each other and felt it cleaner. Right. So while you're tacking it down, you'll have to you be able to fold it over on top of each other without it bunching in inappropriate ways. And when you get these kinds of folds, like right here, you can slowly work these folds like once you fo like finally you fully get it tacked down, and you be real careful with it, you kind of give it a little pinch, and uh, you carefully, you know, tack down the bulging locations. So like this one, how it's bulging out. This doesn't look good. You come in from the other direction and you so kind of deflate it from the area where it's bulging. You come in from the underside and you slowly deflate it. And you 
push it down in. Sorry if you can't see some of this here. This start looking like that. And you just keep slowly working with it. Part of it's going to take time, right? Like you do the the blending technique here. So the sun wants to hit right in the spot that I'm trying to show you. But see, you do the blending technique here, and you blur the line with the felting technique. Keep the needle straight. And you do that on this crease here. You kind of like minimize it to a degree and you pull up the fibers from underneath and you bring them up. And then you cross over the top fibers. And you, you work in the direction, it's kind of like cross hatching. You work in the direction you want the the formation to move in, right? So I want it to go in this direction. So you slowly felt it over in this way. And that's like these blending techniques, like the more you, I mean, With wall, it's not as apparent, in my opinion, but it also depends on the color and and things, but I mean, either way, it's going to kind of look like a little bit of a, you know, I wouldn't say a scar, but it's going to kind of look texturally different because the way the... The material, you're basically stretching it, right? So it's going to have this, like, stretched kind of feel to it. And it's going to have these fibers that look like they've been fuzzied up. Okay, so did a little time lapse. So this is the one from... Um, the second video boop, boop. this is the one from the video we're doing now right and we have what I was showing you is those folds we've felted them in pretty good and then we put a little lid on top so you can see and then the bottom here, see the little folds? Now, some of the folds haven't been felted in all the way, and others have, so you can kind of see the progression difference. Like these ones up here haven't been, like, felted in. But this one over here has been. Right? So this was a fold... Um, th that I was showing you a couple seconds ago, and now it's it's not as noticeable, it's not as bad. But let's see, you can see how it's coming along. Okay. And then in the next uh, video, I think what I'll do is I'll uh, tackle doing the face. And so, uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs>
And thanks for sticking with me and uh, watching the videos. I appreciate uh, you checking this out. And I hope it helps you like in your crafting. Like you actually have a good time with it. It's pretty fun. Hey. I uh, just wanted to show you some progress on my felting project. And show you some stuff that I was doing um, last time. I don't know if you remember. And it was like felting video. Like I don't want to say. Because I don't remember exactly now. But uh, I had this... Uh, oven character and uh, what I had done is just kind of give her some <laughs> it's kind of like swimsuity um, give her some shoulder armor uh, so it's kind of kind of ninja like little flaps here Felted this all on. Uh, give her like a bra. I, I changed her neck a little bit. I felt it into her scalp. All this hair. I do two strands at a time and I, f I felt it all of it in. Uh, you can see. Uh, you can see the rose. That I, f I felted. All through here. Um, I was doing these. Uh, I looked up tutorials on how to do doll wigs, and they have some pretty good ones out there. Um, but they don't really show you how long it takes t brushing this wall. This is 100% wall like that I'm using for her hair, and just the, the process of it. Just the hair alone took me three days to do. So, I mean, I, and we're talking about this increments like blocked out increments of time. Like, say, I go, okay, today I'm going to work on this for four hours, and then you know. 10 hours later the hair is done so I mean I literally I would go to like a, a place and I work you know do, do some art and then come back and keep working on it and little by little it adds up but yeah it took um, quite a bit of time to do that um and if you don't want to like, invest that much time into it you don't have to a lot of time i was actually i don't know if you can tell like you can see i this is a large amount and i was punching them in two by twos and then i started doing rows so i did a row in the back i did this uh i'll show you take the yarn like this and I'd like cut it and I do this thing where I go like this and I'd stick this like See if I can find a loose piece that I can actually demonstrate properly. Where's my Okay. Took me a second to get the uh the item. Okay, so <laughs> take a piece and then you, know, you take a, like say how much you want her like her scalp hair to be so I had it be like the, about like that I just kind of eyeballed it 
and then I would have it like this, right? And so it'd be like two strands. Have this loop up here. And then I'd take the string like this, lay this across it, and just like, you know, fill the hole and tie the tie the loop down, right? Like that. And when you do this enough times, you feel this entire row, right? And then what I do is I map out like the circumference of the back of her head, right? And then I'd felt it in. Um, I did distress the the wall. I was using um, a technique I saw online. Some people use like cat brush, hair brushes. This is what I was using. The fibers get everywhere. If you're gonna do this near your felt or dolls or anything, put, like set it aside because otherwise you're gonna have like a really big, like, I don't know if you can tell. There's like all these little red fibers that have just, they came from her hair, from me just brushing the welt, the, from me just brushing it. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, yeah, here you can see, you see all these little red fibers? Never ending, never ending. And it came from her hair, and it just gets on the black, and it's like, it, it's become my new pet peeve, is trying to make the doll wig from at, at other places and then applying that knowledge to the felting characters because it, it, what they used to do what they do is they take these these wall things and they glue them onto normal dolls right well I don't need to do that I have she's I have a felted head so put it all in and just like the fibers are everywhere they all over her skin they turned her nose tip of her nose a little bit of a different color i tried to restore it a little bit but this was the base she still has that puppety feel um no strings attached type stuff but i was working on another piece of sh or for her shoulder here and uh, I know I was also working on armor, and I'll show you the uh, the back here. Try to make it look like a like a ring. I felt that it's like the cylinder, and then put it across like here. Originally, I was gonna do this kind of bathing suit warrior type, but then I was like, might as well go. I don't know. She kind of has like this Warcraft type type feel. Might as well like start just going in that direction. So. I took the time to felt this pauldron and like each individual piece takes a, a, a good amount of time and so you kind of have to plan it out and so I made all these straps and all these different things but I didn't want anything with felt to have velcro or um, elastic or anything like that like it kind of uh, clashes with the well, this is, I'm using the, the fiber fill. The, uh, these are like the synthetic blends, but, um, and when you do that, you get this, the, te the textures here, you see a little bit of the pilling, but if she's 100% wool, like you can get 100% wool sheets and you get the 100% wool, she won't have that problem or your character won't have that problem. But I wanted to make armor for her, so she's more warrior and less, you know, scandal clad. So I made this back piece here. It's like a back arm. It's like a monster shell of some sort. Like a turtle shell, kind of. And I wanted it to have, like, some type of reality. So I made, it, like, two double straps with these kind of, like, metal bar bearings to show and this is just like two strips of felt and I felted it on I tacked it in 
and then I did the little color in there. And I'm using them, I, I kind of, I measured around her, but did it by eye, like took the, the strand out and then like that, cut each piece and I made her this chest piece that goes around. Um, took me a while to felt it around like, and get a good arc on it so it could fit around her chest. And then I left the one side wide open. So you can see the three pieces here, then one side wide open so that I could slide it in from an angle. So, here I'll show you. Ends up being like dressing a doll. <laughs> so, uh, what I did for this side is I just have the arm and I kind of slide it up through. Like this. I slide it up through and I have it kind of. So it rests along the side of her body. And then this is her little back armor. So it rests like that. And then her pauldron. And this is all just 100% eco the what is this, uh, the eco eco fire classic felt this is a, this is just a pack of different colors I got for six bucks needles I use are the uh, the clover needles I got for seven bucks and then um, the rest of it is just the the filling this the stuffed animal filling you can get at uh, Michael's and I get that for like six seven bucks. And it's the um, uh, thread and loop branch, loops and threads, I think, something like that. And it's just the classic fell. And it, it felt perfectly, and you're able to create whatever you want. Like, you, you literally, you the only restriction you have is your imagination. So, So this is her chest armor, and then I had this like strap I had made here to come around to the front. But if I felt that and tack it on, then she'll never be able to take out this chest piece, just because uh, the way I have it designed to come on and off. And yeah, see, I just picked up all these little red fibers for it's from like combing the hair, getting the hair to like. I made like dreads and I, I just made her look like a warrior, you know, really wanted that warrior feel. I wanted it to kind of look like a mix between a, I don't know, like a troll and a blood elf or something. So. I love this other part out here. I started this skirt. This is the skirt here is, is I made a little bag. I made a little like a little pouch. This is all like this is her like belt character. This is another, uh, another pouch here that I was going to make it sit on her like, like this. So 
she's quite large, so <laughs> so you, you can see like she would sit like that, and then she would have you know her warrior skirt and her bags, her little Batman pouches, and in the back here, I'm gonna have like a hook that comes across. I had. I was designing something with a fell. I was felting it. I don't quite got it finished. But I was gonna hook across like this. And then adhere to the belt here. So the belt could or so the waist piece could be applied. And then obviously I'd like cover this area. So she could have the pauldron, the the that big tear like animal belt piece. This uh anyway. So yeah, this is the little short short recap I guess of uh the, the progression of what's been going on and, and what you, you can really do with it. Like cause see if the construction of it is, is, is fairly, I mean, it's, it's fairly simple. I don't believe anybody else uh, couldn't do it. Like, if you put the time into it, you could. And you should get, like, the strip of uh, the felt here. I got the, the multicolors come in handy for doing different things. And, um, this pouch was just, the like, the fluffing, you know? I covered it and with the... Uh, Made it look like a little knot there, and I can. I can show you here with. Uh... So, so you cut out a piece of felt. You want to adhere it you know make this hook look better got your little needles When I first started this project, it originally was just trying to set out and prove to myself that I could take the the stuffed animal fluff and I, I could make my own stuffed animals from scratch, actually a sculpted character. And I have um, parts that uh, I use, I'm going to use the doll joints, and I'm going to do other videos later on about making the doll joints in the, the, the felted characters, so that you can see, like, they can be, they can be like action figures, or they can be, you know, somewhere in between, they'll be the action plush, that'll be action plush, um, but if you have the desire, then you put any time into it, you can sculpt whatever you want for like, I, I think a lot of times, well, I just got tired of, uh, like say Warcraft, where they're coming out with like their toys and they're coming out with all these different things. They never once came out with like the troll priest or they never once came out with uh, certain characters or if it was the troll priest, it wasn't my troll priest or it wasn't the characters that I had, you know, so. Or my Tauren warrior or just different, different ways of, uh, you know, connecting with the, the, I mean, it's not, it doesn't always have to be Warcraft, but can, I mean, I just took a theme and was just using that as a guideline, but you could do it with anything. You can do it with, you can say to yourself, hey, you know, I am unhappy with the state of uh, 
I don't even know, Ninja Turtle toys or something, and then you, <laughs> you, you can make your, you, you can make your own, you can make your own stuff, you can make your own monsters, and, uh, whenever I go to the store nowadays and I see the plush selection, like if you go to Barnes and Noble and you look at their, like the dragon plush or whatever, a lot of them are pre they're pretty good, they're good enough, they're pretty cool, but they could be better. I mean, they, honestly, I mean, I'm putting a lot of time into this project just to prove something to myself more than anything else. But also, eventually, once I get, like, really proficient with it, and, I, and it's not, like, such a time sink, I can, I can go and do more with it. I can, you know, ex extend beyond just, you know, the one felted character, the two, three or four felted characters per month or whatever. And that's usually what, uh, what happens. It's, it takes about... Takes about a month of like just say blocking out like five hours a day, saying, "Hey, I'm gonna do five hours." To the... Well, it depends because there's a lot of distractions and things that go on. But if you you just sit there and you work on it, it, it takes five six hours a day. And then you'll get like a piece done, and then you have to you have to kind of trust the plan that you know what you're doing, and that's that's where I always uh, struggles. I never have a plan. I I just like see a character and I go, okay, I'm gonna draw a hand, and then I'm gonna draw a monster, and then I draw a monster, and I I just do it. But some people really need this like a structure. I always just felt like the structure had so much build up. God, by the time I got done making the plan, I was tired. And then I didn't get to do I'd draw or create or do anything. But then, I mean, if you take into consideration, like, once you make the plan already and you take all that time to make the plan and you're fatigued from making the plan, you can just wait and come back to it when you're not tired and start working on the project. But at least you have a plan by then. I never, I never had, the, like, the... The foresight thought when I was when I was younger to to actually you know I would just sit down and draw a picture. I feel like drawing a monster today and I'd just sit down and draw it. And then like you have a whole collection of different monster drawings or character superheroes or or whatever and then at the end of the day you're like, Well, I didn't Okay, I have like it's kind of like a quilt, you know. You have like a a patch, a patchwork, but it's not like a, a cohesive design or an idea. So, what I'm trying to do now is like focus on a task and completing a task instead of saying each day do something different. Each day, you know, I had a mentality where I was still like still trying to learn the ropes even past the point where I was considered uh, good enough at what I was doing to be a, like a professional, say, at drawing or whatever. Alright. It's so bright and hot here. Like, it's like 95 and the humidity is 30, 40%. I don't know. It's absurd, but... I think, I think it was easier to see it before. Anyway, I'm laying down this, uh, this brown felt here. I'm going to lay down this black felt and re reinforce this, uh, this bond here so, the, so it's not as flimsy. And then I got this, uh, Fairfield deal. I don't know. The orange one. The red dot. Yeah, red dot. I did the entire project with this one, the one needle. And what probably took more time was because they have things, and I ha actually have a thing where it's like a holder, and you can put multiple needles in it, right? Well, I'm stingy, so I see this thing, and it's like an extra 20 bucks. And it holds extra needles, and I go, 
like when I'm doing this like f fine work like this like poking it and forming it and trying to make sure it, you know it, it looks the way I want and like four needles doing that that's not going to work but if you can actually get that to a point where like you're not doing the fine work you're actually doing the bulking and you're actually just covering large space it probably does help in the early stages it's kind of like um when sculptors when i would ever watch sculptors they would do these these techniques that to me were just like raking huge amounts of clay and these all these like ridges and even with the paper clay like i saw these guys making ball jointed dolls from scratch and they get this material that just huge grooves into the doll and immediately to me i'm like well you ruined it you just destroyed all that work but then they get the sander out and they can buff it and they put all the fine toning into it and it looks amazing and like oh well you can never even tell it was raked with like I want to say three sixteenths of like galvanized ridges like all throughout the course of the body like it just looks terrible and oh, I don't know if you can see So I did a quick tack and I put that back right there. Just strengthening this here. I'm gonna, this video was more for uh, just kind of doing a, a quick update and to encourage you. Like the techniques I was doing on the other couple of videos before this one apply to this, apply to what you see here. Like all of this, like you'll see in the other videos, like this. Well, it takes like to sculpt the little hand. You know, I'm gonna make her a weapon to hold on to, so I made her hand like that. You know, like she's got the. I use my hands as reference. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I don't know if anyone actually, you know, checks these out for felting. Um, I'm gonna. This is more of a puppet video for you know how to felt your own like puppet character but for other i'm gonna have other ones with the doll joints so she'll be you know or the character will be more you know pro like proper and the the movements of a um i guess a stuffed animal with the doll joints and the like the the bear joints but um yeah, I just want to share some art. I hope you like it. Make something cool. 